They really don't make movies like these anymore, do they? The world is on pause, the planet stopped, so since I, as everyone else, have plenty of extra time, I'm consuming Netflix in industrial quantities. So I came upon this old goodie, Lethal Weapon, arguably the best buddy cop story ever put to film, with amazing chemistry, good story, and gripping stakes, with no need to save the world to keep us interested, by the way. You really are crazy. I'm hungry. But what's more important is how the story is put to screen, I think. And I wanted to break down the introduction of the walking, talking, quote machine, Roger Murtagh. Diplomatic community. It's just been revoked. And less so of Martin Riggs. We get an establishing shot of a quiet neighborhood, switching to a bathroom scene, and immediately by the bathroom scene we're told that this man has a beautiful family that does not believe in privacy. His oldest daughter hangs in the bathroom for a bit longer to bring her to our viewer's attention, being that she's the stakes in the movie. She also lets us know that Officer Murtagh is too old for this shit. You know what? Your beard's getting gray. Kinda makes you look old. But I mean, that's alright though, because I still love you. As well as displays the special bond that good fathers tend to have with their daughters, while being attractive, setting up the overprotecting jealousy of Murtagh. It's so well shot that until I started breaking down the scene, I didn't even realize that most of this scene is portrayed through the mirror. We hear a saxophone start playing a swing blues lick starting our association of the instrument with Murtagh as a kind of late motif. The lead instrument then switches to a bluesy electric guitar as we change location. A white shot of a dim beach with a dog running towards a pathetic trailer parked on a shore. We see a man in bed smoking a cigarette with a gun under his pillow and a filled ashtray on his sheets, obviously displaying carelessness and problems with sleep. The door is wide open, the TV is playing telemarketing this man cannot possibly care for, he's naked. The dog caringly waits for him to get up. This dog that's free to stray is the only creature in this man's life, and that's made pretty obvious. His door is wide open through the night. This man has nothing to lose. He picks up a beer from the fridge as a morning drink, for crying out loud. These two men are nothing like each other. We are then taken downstairs where we are treated further proof that this household does not believe in privacy. The spot on the tie gives us that office dork vibe. The gun on his waist tells us he must be a cop. The messy kitchen gives us the reason to believe she might be a lousy cook. But one thing is made clear, Murtagh cannot have five minutes of peace in his own busy home. In the sweet dialogue, Mrs. Murtagh mentions that the office called about Michael Hotsacker, a name Murtagh needs a second to remember. We're told he hasn't spoken to him in 12 years, which means... That would make me... 50. So that means that you're... Uh, we're not gonna discuss that. Portraying great chemistry and a believable loving relationship. We get character age, chemistry, a pretty sweet joke, and a setup for the next scene with poor Hotsucker's daughter in less than a minute with no exposition or dialogue. Right after we find out Roger knows Hotsucker from Vietnam. And since he never talked about him to his wife, we not only find out that he has served in Vietnam, but also that he doesn't like to speak about the war, suggesting this man has seen action. Furthermore, we see that he is a loving father to his younger daughter, making the sexualized appearance of his older daughter with the sad bluesy line on the sex cement in our brains the complex feelings Roger experiences regarding his beautiful older daughter's age. He obviously can't give her up yet and is terrified for her. With no interaction with a possible boyfriend, we know all too well he's going to be overprotective of her. All of these setups and character traits play off in the movie. Every check of scum that's set in this scene fires. There are no disappearing threads or deus ex machinas. Every trait of the Murtex character and his setting presented will be tested in the story. Too old for this shit. The love to his daughter, the wife's bad cooking. You really like my wife's cooking? No. The capacity for action, the age, I'm too old for this shit. the will for stability, the humor, the sudden comfort that made him the man with the stain on his tie. It's not a complicated story. It's not a story with great themes that fall on the back of an incompetent script. It's just a bloody well-made story, where little space is wasted and every line is meant to pack maximum relevance. 
and a lot of incredibly expensive productions worth hundreds of millions of dollars seem to just completely forget about the simple fact efficient and tight storytelling is fundamental not subversion of expectations with no setup or unnecessarily complicated timelines what's the point i can't take it anymore <laughs> hey 